You should definitely go. It's an amazing experience. It's life changing. This was Tom standing astride his bike outside the coffee shop on the corner of Park and Monroe. He's another voice and a chorus of friends and acquaintances encouraging me to check out the festival culture. Lightning in a Bottle, Utopia, and of course, Burning Man. I was skeptical. In my mind, DJs are on par with NFL kickers as two professions with the most incongruent prestige to talent ratios in contemporary society. I see more utility in doggy yoga or fruit basket arranging. <laughs> but it's not just about that, Tom counters. There's workshops and classes, different things to experience. It's just the whole vibe that's so unique. Everybody's so open. It's just something you need to check out. It was the same message I had heard from other people, too. Rachel, Callie, Mike, Dave, all worldly, intelligent, productive people, people I had a lot of respect for, and I couldn't help but wonder, there wasn't something to it. It seemed like the next logical step. I was in the process of digging myself out of a hole of my own creation. Somewhere around the age of 27 or 28, I forgot how to have fun. One more, my idea of fun morphed into sitting on the porch, drinking beer, and reading Dostoevsky novels. <laughs> I didn't wear a costume on Halloween, and I certainly didn't fucking dance. And anybody who did was a needy little joiner as far as I was concerned. <laughs> Until one day, I realized that was lame and decided to change. I did things like teach myself how to moonwalk and dance the Gangnam style. <laughs> I started listening to Hall & Oates, unironically, and wearing costumes on Halloween again. And it felt like I was on the precipice of something, a headspace I could inhabit. The whole idea of being open, where I can cast off judgment and set myself free to enjoy anything life throws at me. The idea was appealing. Even in my worst headspace, I secretly admired those people that could dance uninhibitedly and befriend anybody instantly. They seemed so free of insecurity and self-doubt. I imagined it was a beautiful way for those cocky, arrogant, little hippie pricks to live. <laughs> And there might be a piece of me that could become that, not full-time, but for a weekend. It felt like a worthwhile experiment to try. And so I did it. I bought a ticket to Lightning in a Bottle to see if I could go up there for a weekend and do the just-be-open thing. I had visions of earnest discussions of self-empowerment and makeshift intellectual teepees. I might even stumble upon a storytelling workshop and wow the participants when I can say stuff like, this is a very relatable theme. Or... <laughs> It's important to delineate what's at stake for the narrator. <laughs> and maybe a sweet and live little dancing girl will smile at me at the workshop, and we'll find ourselves on a sagebrush hillside, talking openly about our dreams and passions and observations on life, as the bright orange sun sets peacefully over a grove of pepper trees. And if all goes well, I'll come out of the experience with a brand new clarity of purpose in life. I'll become one of those people that reads inspirational blogs, then heads down to the beach to take a picture of my toes in the sand and post on Facebook. <laughs> Hashtag gratitude. <laughs> the open, friendly attitude of the festival goers had not been undersold. People would walk right up and say, hi, I'm Cable, and stand there with a smile as the two of you politely search for common ground to relate upon. It was like a professional networking group, but with more hula hoops. <laughs> and since it was the first time at such an event, one question I caught myself asking was, what's your favorite part about coming to festivals? Standing in line for salmon tacos, one woman responded, oh, all the interesting people, like that guy over there. She said, pointing to a shirtless man wearing a leather hat with flowers woven through the hat band. He seems like an interesting person, she said. I was wearing my standard outfit of a plaid shirt, argyle socks, and band sneakers. I realized I probably should have made more of an effort in that department for this event. But at the same time, I couldn't help but think, it's just a fucking hat. I mean, <laughs> any, anybody can wear a hat. For all you know, the guy's boring. You borrowed the hat from a more interesting friend. <laughs> I wandered around the festival all night, went from one dance area to the next. I bobbed along with the different DJs who all played oons music, as in oons, oons, oons. And I know the feeling when you're afraid to dance versus not inspired to dance. And I felt self-assured it was the latter. None of this music inspired me. 
On the way back to my tent, I stopped underneath the glowing rainbow sculpture to smoke some weed with a group of people I met earlier. Isn't this just such an awesome experience, said a man about five years my senior, as he passed to join a cross to a young woman with bow fur leg warmers. Oh my god, it's amazing. It's like the best festival I've ever been to. Well, besides Burning Man, of course. She passed the joint over to me. The man leaned back, stretched out in the grass. What about you, brother man? How's your experience so far? I mean, it, it, it's all right, I guess. I'm not not having a good time. But in my head, I'm thinking, I don't see what the fucking big deal is here. I tried not to let my day discourage me. It was the first night. I had had a long day. There's going to be some warm-up time. Just go with it. Just be open. The next day I went out again. I got myself a cup of coffee, chilled out under a nice shady tree, and did some writing while I passed out a couple dozed in the grass nearby. I struck up a conversation with a girl in a long flowing skirt and a leather medicine belt and peacock feathers in her earrings. She expressed admiration with my journaling, adding that she could never do it herself. She's far too impatient because she's a Gemini. <laughs> I decided on this day to hit up the different classes and workshops at the festival. I wandered into a geodesic dome where a tatted up guy with a hands free microphone was pitching aphrodisiac juice supplements. It felt too much like I was watching the festival equivalent of the ShamWow guy. <laughs> Next, I wandered over to the Soul Groove Lounge and sat on a beanbag to listen about crystal healing. I left with a renewed appreciation of the placebo effect. <laughs> and I also went to a lecture about income disparity by a best-selling author. When he rallied the crowd at the end by invoking the memory of Rosa Parks, I gotta say, he lost me. That's the liberal equivalent of asking four-year-olds if they like ice cream or fat boys if they like blowjobs. Of course they're going to cheer. you got to go one step further, dude. That doesn't work. I wandered down to the lake shore, feeling a bit dejected. Maybe it was a silly idea for me to come here expecting some kind of epiphany. This might not be my scene. But still, why can't I just go with it and be more open to everything around me? What are all these people getting that I'm not? Then I overheard a conversation going on behind me about having roommates and a different energy they bring to a house. And one, woman, and one woman said, back when I lived in New Orleans, I had a roommate that used to paint pictures of pregnant women. And then, you know, I got pregnant, so it's totally about the energy of the house. <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> Walking back to my tent, I'm thinking, I should just go home. But in my head, I heard the voice of the people I knew back in San Diego telling me, you're just not being open enough. You're going to get back the energy you put out there. But how badly do I want this whole open thing anyways? Where does that point lie that you gave it a shot and realized it just wasn't for you? And right then, a woman in all black platform heels and pigtails ran up and shook me yelling, just let go, it doesn't need to be this way. <laughs> At least I'm being transparent with my intentions. <laughs> At the risk of alienating the very friends that had encouraged me to come here in the first place, I decided to give up my hopes of finding some sort of grandiose idea at this festival and began posting my quipsy, quippy observations on Facebook. <laughs> I'd probably be making more friends right now if I had something colorful to twirl. <laughs> Hashtag rave. <laughs> I'm going to go to the curmudgeon tent and see if I can meet some like-minded people. Hashtag, mates at a rave. A girl said this to me. One time, I was doing yoga outside, and a leaf fell from a tree and landed on my back, and I tasted blackberry and thought it was lightning. Hashtag, still at a rave. I spent the day wandering around buying coffee, writing and talking to whomever would come around me, which is basically what I do every weekend. Just this weekend, I was in some weird Bedouin village by a lake outside of Temecula. Everybody was nice. Everybody was open. But what frustrated me about the whole event was that I couldn't find anybody to admit any sort of skepticism. The event was universally the second most amazing thing they'd ever experienced outside of Burning Man. <laughs> 
can't I at least find somebody to tell me it was better last year? Or that it's weird that each DJ has a crew of six guys with backpacks standing around on stage with them. The skepticism is what I like about myself. It's what I like about my friends. It's why I posted my quips on Facebook. And maybe it's why I can't just let go and be open. But if that's the trade-off, then I don't want it. I like myself this way. As it got close to sunset, I wandered up a sagebrush hillside, looking, overlooking the lake and a grove of pepper trees. I thought about a moment growing up. I had gone to church most of my life and never had a problem with it. But when I got to be in junior high, I had a question. If Jesus rose from the grave three days after his crucifixion and started walking around again, how come there's no record of anything that he did? The pastor whom I admired said, that's why we have to have faith. The Bible is telling us what we need to hear. Yeah, but isn't it sort of weird, I asked? Like, the Bible says nothing. You just you, you had to have done something afterwards. This is what faith is about, he responded. I couldn't articulate it that day, but I really needed him to admit that he saw what I saw, because otherwise, how could I trust him? How could I believe there was an overlap in a worldview? <clears throat> Later that night, I went to the cell phone charging station. While there, I ran into a guy that I knew from San Diego, but I had never actually met. He walked up with his phone, his charger, and a bundle of burning sage. Yeah, it's funny, he said, but it's not the most amazing thing in the world. He says it has to be. Thank you, I said. I appreciate that. He asked me if he could bless me with the sage incense. With his sword, I said, of course, I'd like that. I closed my eyes and held out my arms, and he trailed the burning sage up and down my body, swirled it around in front of my chest, and said a quiet prayer, ending with, Namaste. We talked a little bit longer, waiting for our cell phones to charge. Then I gave, gave the guy a hug, said goodbye, and went back to my tent, where I friended him on Facebook and hoped he didn't look at my feed for at least a couple days. That's your host, Nathan.